the train SPR scroll teardown um, part two on the, the first video I did a quick electrical check and we went from start to run to common they were all open line uh, no resistance through the windings and on the common on the common we were getting a ground uh, to the case and we also figured out that it was a burnout and I took the oil out you can see the oil there that's supposed to be transparent that obviously is not it's blacker and coal so I cut it open to see what was going on um, we'll just do a quick rundown on what's inside one of these guys uh, they're very very similar to the scroll uh, that Copeland makes the, the basic model um, not the electric not the electronic or the modulating or anything, just the, the common scroll that they make, um, just the ZR series. Okay, this is the pan, or the base of the compressor. You see it has a dish to it, just for the oil to sit down in the base of them. On the train rotor locks, there is actually a magnet that's in the base to pick up any of the machining uh, dust or just the operational little metal fragments that come off, the steel fragments, they'll actually get caught in the metal magnet. I mean, on the, uh, the magnet on the base. The scroll, I, I didn't see any in the inside of it anywhere, so the scrolls must not have that, but I do know every recip that I've taken apart from train has the uh, a little magnet in the base. This is the head of the compressor. Move this out of the way. This is the head of the compressor. Uh, right here is your seat for the top of the scroll for the high side. It'll make a seat right against that. Um, and then your discharge gas goes up and then out through your discharge line. There's actually a baffle on the inside of this. Uh, this little brass guy here is a relief valve. So if the head pressure builds up too high, that relief will blow and it actually will go back down through the inside of the case uh, to prevent the head from getting too high. Uh, I think on the 22s it's around 400 PSI. It's, it's probably 375 to 450 or something of that nature. I, I didn't look it up, but in any case, the also on the rotor locks, which the, the reason they call it a rotor lock is there's a knot that actually threads onto this. It's not sweat, uh, and there's a Teflon gasket. Always watch, make sure you put the Teflon gaskets in. I hate to say it, but I've gone out to a couple leak checks where that was the problem, and the guys would crank them on. I mean, crank them on so tight they just twist the lines up because it wasn't sealing well. Need the Teflon. Um, it is a compression seal, but the Teflon needs to be in there no different than doing a piston uh, on an evap coil. The check valve is right inside here. It lets the pressure go out, but it won't let it come back in to the compressor. Uh, let's see if I can show you the inside of this. There, you can kind of see the check valve down inside that to prevent the backflow. So it's actually called a backflow preventer. Um, this is one of the sides of the case. You can see the little dimples here. You can see it on the outside. What those do is it locks the top of the motor assembly, or not motor, but the uh, compression assembly in place to keep it from spinning uh, as it runs. Because keep in mind, this is an oscillating scroll. Uh, it's not like a piston that's in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, this actually will just oscillate back and forth. Well, if there wasn't something to keep this in place, then this whole assembly would just free spin. Uh, Any time that the rotor would spin, that would make that spin. Uh, I've never had a scenario where that's ever happened because, I mean, you'd have to break off all four of those nipple assemblies. The original problem with this was that we had open windings. This is your plug. It burnt right off the stator. Um, plug comes right off. It just plugs right on the back side of your terminal strip. And that continues to the stator. Um, some of the insulation is actually gone from the back side of this. That's your suction inlet. There's no check or anything on that. The only thing that's on that is just a baffle just to distribute the, the vapor out so it's not shooting straight into the compressor. I think it's just a directional thing just to help flow through the compressor. Also probably partially to help cool. Um, that way you have that vapor covering the whole surface area uh, to cool it down because these aren't air overs. And if they were they wouldn't put blankets on them to, to prevent sound. So the refrigerant 
and the vapor coming through will actually cool this assembly down. Um, this is the base of the compressor. You put the way this how it was. This little E clip was on there holding this assembly in place. This is the base of the compressor here. As you can see, there's a hole in the bottom of it because these are oiled by centrifugal force. So as the crankshaft spins, it's centrifugal force. It'll actually suck the oil up through the assembly. Ugh. You can see the little pieces of tin on the inside there, and that helps scoop that oil up through to lubricate the motor assembly. Uh, I'm not sure what the technical name is for this. We're going to call it an oil cup, but that goes right on the bottom of the shaft. That's also going to be partially in oil, and that'll help sling. And I'm sure the way that it's designed, it'll let oil leach by on the outside to go on the outside of that bushing. Um, also, it'll keep oil on the bottom side of the, the rotor shaft. This is the top of the compressor. Okay. I was saying about the seal. I can't get it out now. Some bitch. We'll get her. There we go. Okay. This is the high side seal. The way that it works is right here in this little divot. Right there is that little pinhole. The gas will actually come up through push up against this seal. In this seal, the lip will actually seat against this. So the higher the pressure builds, the tighter the seal is against this. Uh, there's two little, I don't know if it's Teflon or what it is, pretty tough stuff, whatever it is, but there's a seal here and then there's a seal on the inside. You can see it between those two steel plates. So as the pressure builds, it'll push against that. The compressor will put high side gas or high pressure gas through and then discharge it out through the compressor so this is just sitting in limbo until the compressor starts to rev up and then it builds up pressure and it'll lift it to seats and then the seals on the side keep this sealed uh, obviously it, it, normally it sits almost flush down inside the stationary scroll until it makes compression so there's actually a really good video on this operating uh, it's on YouTube it's Aussie uh, I think 50 that does it but uh, look it up down on the inside here is another relief right there you can see the keeper so pull the keeper out okay there's your keeper goodbye to that and then the actual valve itself See if I can get it out. There we go. It's kind of hard to see, but it actually has a dome to it and a little nipple. So if you listen, when the pressure builds, that opens up almost almost like a thermal disc, um, and will release. And then it comes through those little guys, all those little holes. So I'll say goodbye to that. These are the bushings that would go down on top because even though this is a fixed portion of the scroll it still has to move a little bit um, this is the inner of the scroll you can see the pressure actually comes through that half moon the other little hole that you see was that release that we the relief that we just took out so as, as the bottom oscillates it builds pressure comes up through the center the seal seats pushes the gas out through. Um, the suction side of the compressor comes from there, goes in here on the side, and then it's compressed, works its way around, and then out through the center. 
this is the oscillating portion of the scroll. This will, I'm trying to do this one-handed, this actually will, let me just take it off. This just oscillates and it goes around the inside of that and that's how it builds compression. These two pieces meet at the center, pushes it up through. Uh, this is where that scroll sits. Let me try to get it back in place here. There we go. This is where that sits, and this will also move with it because you can see the shaft isn't centered. As the shaft spins, it works its way around the outside of this centered shaft. So that's what makes it oscillate. It's almost like a cam the way that it goes around the outside. And this is your tapered bushing for the bottom of the scroll. Like I said, this is what the scroll sits on. These little sliders here will actually slide back and forth. And then this slides a little bit also. That's what allows this to move back and forth on this guy. Right there. But it's so galled up now. But this will actually move a little bit on the inside. Like I said, this is mainly just for float. Like the, the, the bushings on these are just for float for it to move up and down just a little bit. Um, this is fixed because it doesn't oscillate. It doesn't move around. The business end is right there. This is the scroll seat. It sits on top the crank. And like I said, this is stuck on the inside so this doesn't move. And there's your rotor. It spins around on the inside and here it looks like plastic but this is actually aluminum counterbalance on the inside and you can see there they're opposing and that helps balance the motor out whenever this is spinning to make up for the scroll oscillation so this thing doesn't vibrate all over God's green earth you can see it there and also I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see the oil passage way up through the crank where the oil comes up through to lubricate everything. And then your stator. Um, fires actually burn off right here. That harness would actually plug onto that. And that's why the top's all charred. The only other safety on this is a thermal overload right here. That's your thermal. For the windings so if it gets too hot it'll open up your winding set all these other little binders is just to connect the windings through that's where all the black comes from it's from the arcing I mean, you can see it just it literally just melted right through these wires I mean and it took the binding off the the windings these little bindings are what hold the windings together you can see the bottom what it's supposed to look like it's tight it's actually pretty clean too because all the arcing happened on the top end. Okay, well, that's it. That's the guts of a, a train scroll compressor and the, the way that they work. Like I said, this oscillates. You'll also hear these making contact because there's nothing in it when you're pumping the system down if you get your pressure too low. And these will actually make a little bit of contact. Um, also, this seals tighter and makes the compression space between this face and the face down inside as pressure builds tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter um, as the unit operates. It's, it's actually a pretty pretty cool design. Um, they, the way that these are designed, um, as long as you install them correctly, you have good oil flow and you don't have liquid coming back into the compressor which are going to wash the bearings on the base here. That's another thing that happens on these a lot is that rotor gets oblong on the inside from the bearings wearing out because it's just it's washing all the oil out there. It'll actually start to make contact with the insides of the stator. I've had that happen a couple times. Um, this one actually doesn't look doesn't look too bad. It's in pretty good, I mean other than being filthy. It's in pretty good shape. Okay, well that's it. Um, if you have any questions or anything you can leave a comment but it's it's pretty cut and dry I said this is a burnout open windings I just wanted to show what happens this isn't obviously what happens every time but it just it just burnt right off 
and then the inside of the wire was actually shorted to the base on the uh, oops, on the base of the scroll and that's where we had our ground fault on our common leg it just happened to be making contact right there okay thank you